Britain is brimming with hoarders. In these boxes? I have no idea. There's the body in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Who's collecting? <laughs> has turned catastrophic. Oh. But help is at hand. I do. I need a lot of help. <laughs> Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. They're selling for hundreds, if not thousands, of pounds. Excellent. Make me an offer. While Queens of Clean, Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. Anything would be a little better than what we have here. I think I'm going to have to be quite firm. They'll clear rooms for the first time in years. Now that's better, isn't it? This is fabulous. It won't be easy. I am petrified. But they're determined to declutter. Can't send him to the skip, can you? And make some big money. Wow, Amazing. that's good news, isn't it? Today, we're in Newcastle to help a couple whose family home is overrun with unconventional collections. My dad's false teeth. Uh, I've got some momentum. I'm determined. While in South London, it's all clothes and shoes. Heels. Mm. 30 pairs. I think I'm Victoria Beckham. Our experts aim to persuade her to clear out her wardrobe and toss those togs. Can we start folding them and boxing them? Yeah. Our team are determined to leave behind a satisfied feeling and some financial healing. They're in brilliant condition, so they are going to give you a return. Today, we're helping two couples, Diana and Peter in London. What's these old girlfriends? What should I do with them? Should I tear them up? But first, in Newcastle, meet Joe and Catherine, who live in this three-bed semi with their two children, two dogs, and a great deal of clutter. All this has been amassed by Joe, who can always find space for the numerous things that catch his eye. or ear. If I see something that interests me, I pick it up, put it in my pocket, bring it home and fill the house. It's true. And that's no exaggeration. I've got a collection of old cameras, about 1,200 toy cars, thousands of Pokemon cards. Much to the dismay of wife, Catherine. Yes, it does uh, upset me a little bit, having this much clutter. And it's easy to see why. I've got my collection of gloves. Hang on, gloves? It's no good finding a glove in a park. He did say gloves. They have to be gloves from the side of the road. My foam finger, I was quite pleased with. Right. After a lifetime of hoarding, this Geordie magpie has come to a decision. I think I would be happy to let just about all of it go, if it was going to the right place. Well, helping him to do just that are our experts. Nice area. Curtis has worked in the antiques trade for two decades, so has a keen eye for items that might make money. Joe. While Joanna, who runs her own cleaning company, Show us your clutter. will be on hand to help with the big clean-up. Wow. Oh, wow. No Stop. dinners on this table. <laughs> Not at the moment. Normally, this stuff's not on the dining table. It's normally up in the loft or in the gym or somewhere else in the house. Yeah. But it's somewhere. I'm just yeah, sure, it's Catherine. it's piled somewhere. There's always clutter. Why don't I take Joe and see if I can find anything interesting? Brilliant. And Catherine and I will have a rummage. I'm sure you know everything your husband's been collecting <laughs> over the years. Um, not entirely, no. Really? I know some of the things, but um, the things in these boxes I have no oh, idea. Oh, I'm excited. The journey Take of him. discovery. Yeah, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> right, come on, Joe. Just, just be gentle with it, OK? We will be. <laughs> Thanks. I think we're going to have to do something here. Joe's got so many boxes, I don't even know if he knows what's in them. Joe's finally decided to sell some of his collections, which have spilled out from inside to outside. It's a portaloo. No, Curtis, it's not a carsey. It's a shed full of toy cars. Originally, there was only 12 cars in the series. Now we've got just over 1,200. 1,200? 1, yeah. 
And Joe isn't entirely to blame for this out-of-control collection. He took an interest in the film Cars when our son was very little. And I got him the first 12. And then he just got more and more and more. Obviously misjudged Joe's collecting a little bit. Obviously. They're all in boxes, so you, they don't come out of the boxes? No. So, how much are these each? The smaller ones uh, range between about three and five pounds each. So five pounds each, 1,200, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, up to six grand. They're in brilliant condition, so they are going to give you a return. As long as it's not too low. What's too low? I think the minimum I would let them go for is probably about maybe three grand. The market for retro toys is huge, especially if they're in mint condition and with their packaging unopened. But the value of specific toys can wax and wane depending on the trends. So a bit of research at the point you choose to sell can pay dividends. Joe's got hundreds and hundreds of cars. He tells me he's been offered something very reasonable in the past for them and he said no because it wasn't enough. I do know someone that's going to be very interested in buying them, I think. But is the amount of money going to be enough for Joe? That's the problem I think I've got with this. While Curtis susses out his contact, Joanna and Catherine are in the room the family would like to use as a gym. What stuff did you want to keep in here? Can you speak on behalf of Joe or is it? Really, it's, it's his stuff in yeah. here. And I, I have no idea what's Can in here. Can you just turn a blind eye or? There comes a point, I think, when you just have to put your foot down and say, right, can yeah. we just have our house back, please? So why don't we come to a plan with you and Joe? We could get this room cleared in no time. Brilliant. Hopefully, Joe's on board. If we could get to a point where we didn't have the clutter, we could have people around. We could have that housewarming party that yes. we've been meaning to have for the last eight years. And the sitting room is certainly equipped to host a headbanger of a housewarming. Um, well... I mean, it's like the tour bus for Iron Maiden. Or it may cause Bruce Dickinson to run to the hills. But as there's money to be made here, Curtis is beginning to feel rather rock and roll. So how many guitars and how many amps? Um, I've got half a dozen guitars and probably about half a dozen amplifiers as well. Does this mean you play? Um, I can't play. Of course not. I've basically inherited a lot of it. Oh, OK. Um, my dad was uh, into his guitars, into his amplifiers. I don't want to get rid of all of this. I've probably got more emotional attachment to yep. some of this stuff than the likes of the cars, but I physically haven't got the space to keep all of it. And so... if you're not using it, it might as well go to someone that wants to. Yeah. The value of second-hand musical instruments will always be greater if they're in perfect working order and with minimal cosmetic damage. Joe's guitars and amps are not in the best condition, so Curtis may struggle with this sale. Upstairs, Catherine's showing Joanna one of her own spaces that needs our clutter clearer's expertise. This is my... Skinny room. Skinny room? You can't breathe in this room. <laughs> no. How do you get to this stuff? With quite a bit of difficulty. So Joe's not the only hoarder in the house. The poor man's been getting all the stick today. <laughs> yes. Uh, he isn't really the only hoarder, I have to admit. Joe, I hope you're hearing this. But then I hoard for everybody else as well. The children. I have all of the toys that they've grown out of. They were supposed to go places and they just haven't moved on yet. And classroom assistant Catherine has high hopes for this space. I would really like to have a little study area where I can just um, spread my stuff out. That would be really lovely. Meanwhile, Curtis is focusing his attention on another hoard that could net the couple a bit of cash. Where do these cameras come from? What's the story with these? It's one of Joe's collections from when he was quite young. He, oh, he okay. loved photography. That amazing little barrette like that, you know, it's... It wasn't particularly expensive when it came out, but there's still probably, a, you know, a good few pounds at auction, cos, look, it's in per like all his stuff, in yeah. great condition. And there's going to be another gem in here, you just know it, don't yeah. you? Look at that, isn't that amazing? A Cine 8 
that's fabulous. 1960s, brilliant condition in its original case. Beautiful. It actually works. Collectors looking for specific makes will pay up for cameras if they've been well looked after. Curtis hopes a real enthusiast will just click with Joe's collection. Oh, Peter Sellers. <laughs> after a busy morning looking through Joe's hoard, Curtis has identified some key items to sell. And they were sitting in the treehouse, but this one isn't child's play. You telling me? Oh. It's Joe, who is saying a lot of the right things, but I think in his heart, he might not see this through. And that, to me, is the toughest job we've had. Yes. Have you got a plan? I've got Catherine on my side. I'm going to be working now with Joe. Mm. Wish me luck. While Joanna stays to help Joe decide what to keep and clear out. Curtis has taken Joe's camera collection to sell us a lot at auction. So we've got Joe's cameras. All we can do is keep our fingers crossed and see how we get on. Uh, let's get straight on with these, uh, lot uh, three, four, eight, and I'm going straight in at £30. I'm looking for £35 now, at £30. Come on now, at £30, £35, thank you. £40 I've got, at £40 now. At £40, £45, fresh bit of £45, I'm looking for £50 now, at £45 now, at £45 and £50. At £50 and £55, at £55 now, at £55, I'm looking for £60. At £55 I've got, at £55 have you all done now, quickly. At £55 and I sell at £55. You're Oh, sir, 55. Thank you, at 55 pounds. Oh, it's low, but it's a sale. I have to say, I was really disappointed because I found that lovely Cine 8, and I've seen them sell for 150 quid. Nevertheless, at least the cameras have been snapped up, giving Joe and Catherine a good start of 55 quid minus selling fees, a nice incentive for them to carry on with the clear out. And our experts aren't just responding to Joe and Catherine's hoarder SOS. This quiet street in South London is home to Diana, Peter and their two daughters, Alana and Sienna. At first glance, it all looks pretty tidy in the family home, so what exactly is the problem? Well, Diana's a very dedicated follower of fashion. Heels. Mm. 30 pairs. Can't wear them because they're too pointy. So I've got a few handbags tucked in there. I think I'm Victoria Beckham. <laughs> I've got quite a few furry things. And Diana does have expensive taste. Liberty trainers. Brand new. Brand new Timberland boots. Not worn. Another pair of boots. Brand spanking new. Won't show you the price tag on that one. But it's not just high fashion that's eating up the space. In a way, they're both as bad as each other. My mum's more the clothes, and then my dad's more with, like, tools, kind of building stuff. Sink for the upstairs bathroom, plasterboard, flooring. There is a kitchen actually behind this sofa. I mean, it affects the children. You don't use this stuff every single day. I'd like the house to be just tidy. I think it's time to change. It's become too much. I think I'll just make everyone happy. Over to you, Curtis. As ever, his first job is to work out if he can make some cash from their overwhelming amount of clutter. Builder Peter added this three-room extension seven years ago, and it's packed to the rafters. You've got a fabulous Eames chair up there. Yes, my four-year-old chair, which has never been sat on. Wow, that is absolutely lovely. These things, apart from being very, very, very expensive, they just never go out of fashion. Not going to get rid of that, then? No, no, that's the keeper. <laughs> no money to be made by Curtis yet. What else is through there? More stuff. Yes, unfortunately. Slimy. Oh, and a quite nice little corner cabinet. Do you like it? Not really, no. It doesn't go with anything we, we have now. It's a nice bit of veneer. It's well made. It needs a clean up. But on a good day, it could do £150 because just someone's looking for those sort of things. So if you both agree, I'd like to take this away and pop it in auction somewhere. Yep. Yeah. With my blessings, you can take that. One thing gone, <laughs> then. That's good. Dispatching the cabinet off for sale will certainly free up some space. 
but the couple are still drowning in clutter, and this isn't the first time they've attempted to clear it out. I made a decision that I was going to send stuff to charity, and then Peter said, oh, no, don't send them to charity. I'll put them on eBay, and they're still here. Sorry, uh, so just going to correct Diana on that. Diana said, don't put my things in there. I need to go through them. That is why the bags have stayed here, because she told me not to do it. That's Diana told. Coming up, Joe's struggling to let go. I'd really like to have a good play with it before I got rid of it. And Joanna has a tough job prizing Diana's clothes away. I will wear it. When will you wear it? Doesn't it suit me? It looks lovely. The thing is, there's just too I've many. I've got too much, I know. In Newcastle, our experts are helping Joe and Catherine clear their cramped home. That can go. Brilliant stuff. And in South London, Curtis is trying to help Diana and Peter identify anything worth selling. Their hoard is affecting the whole family. They're both as bad as each other. My mum's more the clothes, and then my dad's more building stuff. Curtis and Peter are on a roll, trying to find unused items that could coin in some cash. I didn't expect to see this sitting at the top of the stairs. To be honest, I, I can't remember why we bought it, to be honest, or, or how we got it. Yeah. So it's a funny thing because it looks like one thing, but it's actually something else. Because it's in a Queen Anne style, the type of handles it's got, the type of veneering, this worn-up veneering it's got, and these feet are a take on a cabriole egg. And once again, they're very 20th century or late Victorian. So it's not 1700, okay. it's more 1900. Because if it was 1700, this is thousands of pounds. But the easiest way to check is to take a drawer out, turn that over. Look at that. Yeah. That is an old wood. It is quite cheap, and it's it's that kind of plyboard wood. But the biggest giveaway, even if it was nice quality wood, is it's been machine cut. Is this something you would be happy getting rid of as well? Yeah, yeah, another item. Doesn't fit in with the style of the house now, so... Nah. Value's interesting. It's tragedy to say it, but you could be looking at something like 100 to 150 pounds. All right, that's that's... Brilliant. On a good day. Yeah. <laughs> so this old chest's unlikely to fetch top dollar, but with a bit of elbow grease to spruce it up, someone might just love it. Back in Newcastle, Joe's finding it hard to get rid of items with family connections. Some things is very, very easy to just discard. Some things you absolutely don't want to discard. It's the ones in the middle. My dad wore glasses all the way through his life and he kept every pair that he ever, ever wore. So he's actually got a photograph of himself wearing these glasses. Where they would go, what would happen to them, I've got no idea. You know, it's easy to understand that Joe's uncertain about what he wants to keep and what he wants to get rid of. Catherine is too, but I'm here to help them both make those really difficult decisions. I don't want to spend my day here just helping you get rid of the few things and then six months' time, the clutter comes back again. Mentally, I've been preparing myself to let go of things. OK. The coins? Am I allowed to keep that particular one? OK. What do you want to do with this? I'd really like to have a good play with it before I got rid of it. OK, so you want to keep this? Yeah. Joanna's got a clever tip to help Joe make quicker decisions on each item. A strict 20-second deadline. Make it 10. Great. 10 seconds. Go. That can go. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> the irons? They'd make a lovely pair of earrings, wouldn't they? Can they go? Um, yeah. This is a good start. Joe's saying... Only 700 more boxes to go. With clearing up well underway, Joanna's confident that they can now make the right decisions on what to keep and what to chuck. 
Joe's made his mind up to keep only the guitars and amps that remind him of his dad, and he'll sell off the rest. I don't want to get rid of all of this. But Joanna has convinced closet clutterer Catherine to clear the mountains of kids' games. I have all of the toys that they've grown out of. We all know how difficult it can be to get rid of those sentimental items, but hats off to Catherine. She's given those old toys and children's games away to a charity, so hopefully some of a child out there will grow to love them. Back in South London, Diana is now joining Curtis and trying to find something to sell. Rising to the challenge, she unearths, no, not the sparkly heels, it's a book. It's the autobiography of um, Maria von Trapp, character from Sound of Music. Yeah. Anything with a signature in is going to have a value mm. for obvious reasons. What did you pay for it? Well, it was a few pounds. Oh, OK. Not a lot. Collectors like things to be in pristine condition. Mm. This isn't, Sorry. so you've messed mm, up. I have, I have. Um, if it's worth anything, <laughs> I'll sell it for you, OK? <laughs> That'll be wonderful. If it isn't, you've got no, to read it. Is that okay. a fair deal? That's a deal. I've said to Diana, I'm going to try and get the money back she paid for that book as best I can. Trouble is, if I don't, she's going to have to hang on to it, and it probably is quite a fascinating read anyway. Upstairs, the spare room's bursting at the seams with Diana's haute couture. Fortunately, Joanna's here to help her out of this clothing chaos. Yeah, I've got a few things. A few? Mm. This jacket, you've got about three or four of the same uh, ones in I different know, colours. I know. And this beautiful, yeah. beautiful dress. Still, still with the I labels know. on, I was Diana. planning to go somewhere and, you know, I just didn't, didn't get round to it. I will wear it. I will wear it. It's one of those things that I... Uh, when will I you know, wear it? Doesn't it suit me? It looks lovely. I'm sure all <laughs> of these clothes in here look lovely on you. But the thing is, there's just too I've many. I've got too much, I know. I've got to reduce it drastically. Sounds like the penny has dropped. Landfill sites are teeming with unwanted old clothes, so recycling them is a much better option. The second-hand clothing market is big business these days, and Diana's got lots of items that still have plenty of wear left in them. I think because they're absolutely in fantastic condition, mm. I think we can get lots of money for these. Yeah, that'll be good. So can we start folding them and boxing them? Yeah. Diana says she's happy to get rid of some of the clothes. Which clothes she decides to get rid of, I think that's where we're going to have the problem. But she has a great incentive for a clear out, a celebration, as Diana's about to hit the big 5-0. I'd like to have a party. I'd like to have a space if people come and visit. It would make me, it would encourage me to allow people to come to the house. Well, one thing's for sure, she certainly won't be struggling for party frocks. After snooping around, Curtis has picked out a few items that Peter no longer wants and that he thinks he can sell. Yep, with my blessing. So Curtis goes off with the goods to try his luck. I found a few bits, but to be honest, there's so much in here, I think we're scratching the surface. There might be a lot more to sell. A lot of the stuff that I've seen, it's all pretty much brand new. Yeah. So there's definitely money to be made in this house. I know that Peter and Diana want to do it for the girls. They want their house back. In fact, they want their home back. I think us being here yeah. might be that little push sure. that they needed just to get them moving. Yes. I'm off. I'll leave you to it. And um, keep your fingers crossed for we'll me. Do. Good luck. So while Joanna stays to help Diana work out which wardrobe wonders she can bear to part with, Curtis is at an antiques village, hoping to find a buyer for Diana's signed Maria von Trapp autobiography. And before he even tries the dealers, he gets a stroke of good luck after a chance conversation with a passing customer. There's a guy in the cafe that might be interested in my Maria von Trapp book, so I'm going to try and sell it to him. Wish me luck. You, Richard? I am, I'm yeah. I'm Curtis. Oh, hello, Curtis. How are you doing? I was told you might be interested in this book. I am indeed. Bit of a Sound of Music fan, are we? Well, yes, you know, a little bit. There you go. Oh, that's lovely. But it's signed, but isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's signed. Make me an offer, then. OK, um, five quid? I can't argue with that, to be honest, Richard. Yeah? That's a deal. OK. Smash Excellent. it. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. A fiver in the kitty for a tatty book. Well, it's something. <laughs> Still to come, 
Diana's not keen on being stripped of her wardrobe. Oh, no, I want to keep that one. I don't want to end up, end up naked. And Joe's giving super seller Curtis a run for his money. We've tentatively agreed on just under $10,000. In South London, Diana and Peter have hoarded a houseful, so our experts are trying to convince them to part with their pointless possessions. I will wear it. I will wear it. It's one of those things that I... When will I you wear not. it? And at Joe and Catherine's in Newcastle, they're hell-bent on clearing out Joe's quirky collections. My dad's false teeth. Ugh. I want rid of this stuff. I want it out of the house. I don't know if everybody does this, but just empty shoe boxes, because you think they'll be useful for putting stuff in, but um, they take up so much space. Recycling bin, perhaps? When you've got this amount of stuff, you forget what you've got. And then it's, it's a decision, isn't it? Do you keep it? Do you not keep it? One thing Curtis is definitely selling for Joe is some of his music gear. I've got Joe's amps and Joe's guitars in my car, and I'm going to bring them here to see whether these guys will buy them as a job lot, because I don't want to be selling them individually. So, fingers crossed, I get a good deal, if a deal at all. It all rests on Salesman David. So, we've got four amps, three guitars. I've just got to plug this in, just to make sure that... Of course. ..got some sound coming out. No, it. absolutely. Curtis is mindful that these were Joe's dads and hold sentimental value so he is hoping to get a decent price for them. Right, so I'm thinking here, yep. um, £50 the lot. To get the best price for a second-hand guitar and amp, they'd need to be in tip-top condition. These ones may have been played just a little too often. I think they're going to have to go home to him, to be honest. But thanks for looking. I'm sure I'll see you again. See you next time. Cheers. Thanks, then. Bye. Well, for better or worse, Curtis has decided £50 is just too low. Back in South London, Diana says she will box up and sell some of her glad rags. But as they sort through everything, Joanna's worried Diana's having second thoughts. Where I don't want to be <laughs> is after we've done no, this, no, no. the keep boxes are full and we've got no, 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 no sale boxes. It's not going to happen. Keep. Oh, no, I want to keep that one. I don't want to end up, end up naked. No danger of that. Keep those two. Diana might need a little gentle persuasion from Joanna to help distinguish between which favourites to keep and the rest that can be cleared. Moving forward, mm. the things that you want are all on coat hangers. Yeah. They're all well looked after. To save time, because time isn't on our mm. side, mm. let me get some black bin liners, three or four pieces of clothes, bag them. Well, we'll give it a try. Brilliant. My kind of lady. We'll give it a try. A try. <laughs> Come on, let's get clearing. We're on a roll, Diana. Oh, my ski jacket, like I've ever been skiing. Nah, Diana seems like more of an apres ski kind of gal. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm getting out of my clothes! It's nice. You know what? Let's say goodbye to Paul Costello, yeah. shall we? Finally. Bye, Paul Costello. I'll be naked at this rate. <laughs> I did find it difficult when uh, Joanna came in the bedroom and she was rummaging through my stuff. I thought, these are my stuff, these are my things. But I, I was able to let things, some of the stuff go. It's almost emotionally, you know, I was attached to some of the things. But I was thinking, I've got so much stuff. So you really put me in the right frame of mind of, you know, clearing out the stuff and, and finding some space, really. <sighs> At last, Diana's got the hang of it and may get her dream dressing room after all. So Joanna thinks it's time to let her clear out the rest alone. And Peter's not off the hook. He's been given his marching orders to empty that extension. There may be some items that Peter and Diana won't let go of for love nor money. Keep. OK. But with Joanna's help, Diana's hived off her best designer clothes to be taken to a specialist online retailer to sell on her behalf. Oh, my ski jacket, like I've ever been skiing. And the best of the rest will be sold at auction, with the remainder going to charity. In Newcastle, Catherine's making an incredible effort to organise that cluttered little room she hopes to turn into a study. 
it's been hard work in a way, but it's been really cathartic. Making quicker decisions was good. Joe hasn't been slacking off either, but he's finding it trickier to tackle his mound of mess in the makeshift gym. Catherine's really, really gone for it in a big way. She's quite ruthless. We're just different people, and I like to procrastinate. One thing he hasn't procrastinated over is finding an online buyer for his prized toy cars. And Curtis is keen for an update on the possible sale. I've sold one car. Out of four million. Yeah, um, but I, I got some good money for it. $280. That's uh, good. Sure is. At the time of sale, that works out at over £200. What's the plan for the rest? Well, the guy who bought that car, He's very, very keen on the whole collection. We've tentatively agreed on just under $10,000. That's around £7,000. Fantastic news. That's better than any of us could have expected, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I always thought they were worth a lot more. Good luck. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye. Seven grand for a toy car collection. Some offer. But it's still only an offer and not sold yet. Fingers crossed that the buyer follows through. Upstairs, the clear-out of the would-be study room is coming on a treat, but Catherine's frustrated with Joe. When he's decluttering, it's like, it's just everywhere, and it, it drives me mad. You've got to approach it with a bit of humour, I think, <laughs> just to get on with it, because you know, ultimately, the end goal is that it's going to be gone. Joe is struggling to part with some items, but he's getting there. I've got some momentum. I'm determined. In fact, he's been filling up box after box with things he plans to sell himself. Looks like Joe's got the decluttering bug. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Um, a lot of stuff has gone, some stuff hasn't, but um, I've kind of decided car boot sale. All right. Might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Some things I, I don't just want to send to the charity shop. My dad's false teeth. Ugh. That's all that's left of him. I might not car boot those. No. I maybe have taken it to a bit of an extreme in the past, but this is the new me. Glad to hear it. And with even more boxes packed, Joe loads them into his car and camper van, ready for car booting tomorrow. And on a mission to declutter his life, Joe's even decided to sell his camper van too. Back in South London, Diana's hatching a plan to try to hang on to that cabinet. I actually no. thought it would be a nice display no. cabinet for oh, my precious no. diamond shoes. It's not for shoes. No. It's not for shoes. You know, but it looked nice, a nice no. pair of, no. you know. And no. No. no, no, all right, no. No. okay, no. okay. Nice try, Diana, but that glass-fronted cabinet is going to auction. And that's where Curtis is now, trying to sell Diana and Peter's wooden chest of drawers. Brown furniture doesn't always sell well, and there is a handle missing. So all we can do for that is keep our fingers crossed today. Let's start the bidding at £20 for this lot, please. 20 to bid, 20 straight in, 20, thank you. 20 pound bid, 22, 25, 28 pounds. Oh, okay, pounds. so it's starting to move. I think cleaned up, that could be two or three hundred pounds there. Internet bidding at 30, advance if you wish. Bidding, Come on. It's online at 30 pounds, against you all, it's an internet bid. You're all done then, you're all finished at 30 pounds. Last chance then, please, at 30. It's the condition that ruined that. That's the problem. A disappointing result, but at least it's going to a good home. Back in Newcastle, Joe's received disappointing news about that hoped-for seven grand. The would-be buyer of the toy cars is now not buying. But Joe did get top whack for his camper van, and he's been car booting like there's no tomorrow. It's been quite a long, tiring process. Yeah, I probably didn't realise we had quite so much clutter to sort. Yeah. But I feel like we've worked quite hard, actually. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Joanna is back to see what's been done and let them know how much cash their sold stuff has raised. Weeks ago, Joe and Catherine's home was being eaten up by Joe's collections. Rooms couldn't serve their purpose, like the makeshift gym, rammed with the most random clutter. But now... 
All the mess has been moved out, and that running machine certainly breathing a sigh of relief. Let's have a look. Space. Amazing. You've got space. Yeah. And what's it like to have your gym back? Tremendous. Soon, I'll be on this thing every day. Originally, we had plans for it to be some kind of children's room. OK. But obviously, Joe needs the space, and we realised that quite quickly. So it's a lovely storage area, and that means there's room in the other parts of the house for the children, so that's great. Joe wasn't the only hoarder in the house. Upstairs, in the so-called skinny room, Catherine had filled it to the brim with craft materials and old games. But now... Catherine has the office space she's been desperate for, and it's a haven of organisation. It's not been easy for Joe in particular to clear out years' worth of his collections. But, minus selling fees, his hoard has made some money. Well done, guys. You've done what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. Now, for the exciting part, would you like to know how much you've raised in sales? Yeah, yeah. sure. It's a grand total of over £11,500. Yeah. Wow. Cool. That's quite astonishing. Their home is not only becoming hoard free, but they've got a gobsmacking cash for clutter total. What will you be doing with the money? Possibly holiday. Great. Um, we've got a bathroom to decorate. We want to have a housewarming party. So, yeah, it's all good. You're both happy? Yeah. There's been some challenges. Sometimes it's just hard to let these things go. And if Joe does manage to sell his remaining toy cars, potentially more cash in the future. I don't think I will ever completely lose the hoarding, the collecting mentality. Maybe just have one collection. Mm, yeah, yeah, we'll be minimalist. Yeah. Cheers. I'm so pleased for Joe and Catherine. They've both done extremely well. Joe's still got a few more things to sell, and Catherine, it seems, will finally get her home back. Still to come, Diana's declutter continues, but it hasn't been playing. You know, at times Peter and I haven't seen eye to eye. A change is for the better. In South London, Joanna and Curtis have given Diana and Peter a house with a home that was bursting at the seams. And what better incentive for further decluttering? Diana's 50th birthday is approaching. I'd like to have a party. I'd like to have a space if people come and visit. Now, with Joanna and Curtis gone, they're ploughing on with the decluttering on their own. They've roped in daughters Alana and Sienna to spruce up that cabinet to make it fit for sale. There you go. Wax. Oh, wax. Oh, thank you. I just hope there's no spiders on here. Yeah. Walnuts are pretty durable wood, but a well-used piece like this can polish up pretty well, just with a light sand and wax. Can you see it looks more shiny already? Yeah. While the girls are up to their elbows outside, Diana's kitchen floor is now strewn with the collected clutter she's letting go. And Diana's friend, Janice, is helping bag up the clothes to be sold. £180 I paid for it. Oh, my I never God. Worn it. The 19 green bags of clothes are off to the specialist internet seller, who will photograph, list and sell each item in return for 25% commission. Around a dozen blue bags full of miscellaneous clutter will be sold by an auction house, which charges 15% commission, as well as fees for each lot. Diana's mountain of clothes is finally starting to crumble. Next up, the overrun extension. OK, what have we got in these boxes here? Oh, tea light holder, that's kind of quaint. Oh, my God, look at this. Classic yeah. car radio. Is that for my car? No, this is mine. Lava lamp. Oh, gosh. Retro. With so many boxes in here full to the brim, this could take a while. But the van to take items to auction has arrived, so friends and family are hard at it. And Diana's made a discovery that should really speed things up. Oh, pictures of old girlfriends. What should I do with them? Should I tear them up? Uh, oh, well, another girlfriend. Nah, that's my neighbours. Honestly. Maybe a good time to get back to work, Peter. 
Peter's keen to get a glimpse of the top-of-the-range kitchen that's been buried in here for several years under a clutter mountain. But first, that mountain needs moving. Whoops! Careful, guys. Peter could make some money out of that. The door, the, the door leg, the leg. Yeah. Let me go, let me go. Whoops. Oh. And that. But Peter's not just worrying about damaged furniture. There was so much stuff in here. I wonder if we actually are going to get this finished for her birthday. Eventually, the hard work begins to pay off and the elusive kitchen is finally revealed. It's been here, ready to be fitted, but just couldn't get access to it. The 19 bags of Diana's clothes are last to be squeezed into the van. I'm over the moon. And that's one voluminous van full of stuff to be sold. Curtis is in Essex with furniture dealer Jim, eager to get as much as he can for Diana and Peter's glass-fronted cabinet. I know it's watermarked and I know it's not in great condition. Cleaned up? Saleable? Not really. Oh. Not for me. Cabinets are just not selling. People aren't collecting things. It's got no shelves. They'll cost an awful lot of money to replace. It's something that maybe we would have got £200 four years ago. Yeah. The cost of the repolishing, the refinishing, uh, the bits of veneer work is going to outweigh anything we could hope to get for it. So if I did try and sell it to you because I didn't want to take it away, <laughs> what would you offer me? You're looking at 20 quid. Jim squashes Curtis's optimism like a bug, but he always knew how much repair work it needed. Do you know what? I think £20 is a fair price for it, I, to be, I to be honest. Very fair. And I'd rather get £20 than take it back to them and say, sorry, sorry. didn't sell it. That's it. OK. Done. Thank you very much. Here's your £20, sir. A real one. Thank you, sir. It might be less than Curtis hoped for, but at least this unloved, unwanted piece isn't going back to Diana and Peter's overflowing home. Back in South London, busy working parents Diana and Peter have been trying to squeeze in the time to sort their whole hoard. Decluttering has been hard work. Oh my God, you know, it's been exhausting. And, you know, at times Peter and I haven't seen eye to eye. It's one of those things where a change is for the better. Joanna's chumping at the bit to see how Diana and Peter have got on and present them with the money raised from selling their stuff. Over 11 weeks ago, Diana and Peter's spare room was being eaten up by Diana's haute couture. She couldn't see what she owned, let alone use the space. But now... With the mounds of clothes gone, this is the delightful dressing room Diana was dreaming of, with the bonus that it can be used as a guest bedroom. Wow! What do you think? Wow! What do you wow! Think? <laughs> You've done very well. <laughs> I've tried my best. It was you know, just so. bedlam last time yeah, I came. Yeah, I know, I know, very stressful, but it's... I've come in here and I feel like it's... I'm calmer, so it's made a huge difference. So the clothes that you've sold... Yeah. Do you miss any of them? No, I don't even remember what I've um, given away. Well done. OK. Downstairs, the three-room extension was rammed. There was nowhere for the family to enjoy this custom-built space. There's still some work to do, but... Two areas have been better organised, ready for more clearing out, and the third has been completely gutted of their garbage, ready to be decorated and turned into another spare room. We have a room. Yikes! Isn't it? Yeah, if you're surprised. I am surprised. Speechless. A clear I know, room, ready can... for decorating. Yeah, now, ready to so... dress it up. Yeah. To be what? Guest room, little, yeah, little multi purpose. You know, really. At least okay. you've got the space. When yeah, you're definitely. Gonna... And last time I was here, I don't remember seeing this floor. Mm. It's this has been put down. This has just been put you've down. You've been working? Yeah. This is the result, so it's been worth it. Diana and Peter have made great progress with what was a huge task. They've shipped out over 19 bags of Diana's clothes and dozens of other unloved items. And, minus selling fees, their possessions made some good money. Now, yeah. 
<laughs> do you want to know how much money we've raised for your yes, sales? Yes, we'd love to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The grand total of £435. Wow. Oh, wow. That's great. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a lot yeah, of money. It's just wasted space, you know, stuff that was sitting around, so it's great, yeah. With much more space in their home, they've already had Diana's big 50th celebration and now have an impressive cash for clutter total. It's, it's been good. I'm quite happy that a lot of the stuff has gone. I feel revitalised. You know, it's amazing that the power that it's had on, on my life, really, in general, because I, I was a buyer. Cluttering has made me think, look, do you really need it? What a big difference to Diana and Peter's home. They've both come together as a team and created a space that they wanted. I'm really pleased with how it's all turned out. The family should definitely be pleased too.